common property in strata properties. So or strata title plans. This is often an issue because in some strata schemes, there can be some real uncertainty around who's responsible for the maintenance or repair of certain items. And it comes down to, no, it's the, it's the lot owner, no, it's the strata. And particularly when there's a tenant involved in living in a, in a strata lot, that can go back and forwards between the, uh, the tenant, the property manager, the landlord, the strata agent, and it gets, can sometimes create a whole mass of conflict that is not necessary. So there is a common property memorandum and it specifies whether an owner of a lot or the owner's corporation is actually responsible for the maintenance, the repair or the placement of any of the common property issues. So there's a prescribed common property memorandum. Hop onto the uh, you know fair trading website and it's there just again, you know, always and people get sick of me saying this, in the search bar at the top right hand side of the fair trading website just type in common property memorandum and it will come up you can print it off it's four pages long and it actually and it's you know save you save it onto your system you don't need to print it off we're we're very much into uh, saving as much paper as you can so uh it's the only common property memorandum you can use and uh, it's really quite clear. It goes through what are lot owners' responsibilities and it actually breaks it up into, into sections. What is the owner's corporation's responsibilities? And it breaks it up into, you know, balcony. I'm just having a look at it. I've got it here written in, um, printed off in front of me. So it goes into balconies and courtyards, ceilings and roofs, electrical, entrance doors, floors, general, parking and garage, the plumbing issues. So we're getting into, you know, pipes in walls, uh, window issues. And then it goes through all of those same issues from a lot owner's perspective. It's the best four pages that a property manager and a strata manager can have as a resource for that quick guide as to what is a lot owner's responsibility and what is a what is the owner's corporation responsibility. So, because that common property memorandum can't be modified except to exclude specific items that were actually not within that strata plan. So uh, obviously, if it still becomes a, a conflict, professional advice needs to be sought uh, about whether the common property memorandum is actually suitable for a scheme. Now, that's going to happen for much older properties uh, and uh, sometimes it changes with uh, some community title properties. But, you know, that's about getting clarity at the beginning of, a, for those of you who are strata managers, and I know quite a few strata managers actually watch this on a uh, usually on a Thursday morning, uh, from what I've been told, uh, is that have a look at the age and get that clarified at the very beginning of taking on a strata plan. So when you take on that strata plan, make sure that whether the common property memorandum uh, is the one that you will be referring to or whether there is some differences specific to your strata plan. And that's usually some legal advice that you would need to seek. So, and the... the um, the actual strata plan may have sought that in the past. So, you know, that's about taking on, if you're taking on an existing plan from, from an, another agent or a self-managed plan, then that's information that you should be asking at the very commencement of signing a, uh, a strata agency agreement with the lot owners of a strata plan. So don't forget the common pr property memorandum. As I said, best four pages that property managers and strata managers can read. It certainly won't put you to sleep because it will clarify so many of those questions around which so many arguments occur. So guys, you can actually manage some of your conflicts through having four pieces of paper in front of you. Mm -hmm.